She is known for being an American writer who was born in Massachusetts in 1872. Recognized for her literary upbringing and connections, she grew up surrounded by famous authors and scholars, which greatly influenced her writing. Her name is Eleanor Hollowell Abbott. In the world of literature, one name stands out for her remarkable talent and contributions, Eleanor Hollowell Abbott. Born on September 22, 1872, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Abbott was surrounded by literary greatness from an early age. Her father, a clergyman, and her grandfather, a renowned children's author, exposed her to a world of literature and religious thought. Growing up, she had the privilege of knowing famous literary figures like Longfellow and Lowell, making her childhood home a hub of intellectual and spiritual discourse. After attending private schools in Cambridge, Abbott pursued her education at Radcliffe College. Following her studies, she embarked on a career as a secretary and teacher at Lowell State Normal School. It was during this time that she discovered her passion for writing. Though her early attempts at poetry and short stories had little success, her perseverance paid off when Harper's Magazine accepted two of her poems. This breakthrough gave her the confidence to continue honing her craft, leading to her winning three short story prizes offered by Colliers and The Delineator. Among Abbott's notable literary works is her novel, Molly Make Believe, which garnered widespread acclaim and cemented her reputation as a gifted storyteller. This enchanting tale explores themes of love, imagination, and the power of dreams. Another significant contribution to literature is her collection of short stories titled, Little Eve Edgerton. These stories captivate readers with their insightful observations of human nature and the complexities of relationships. Eleanor Hollowell Abbott's literary legacy is a testament to her exceptional talent and perseverance. Her ability to weave engaging narratives and explore profound themes established her as a prominent figure in the literary world. Today, her works continue to inspire and resonate with readers, reminding us of the enduring power of storytelling in shaping our understanding of the human experience. Eleanor Abbott, a talented writer, embarked on a new chapter in her life in 1908 when she married Dr. Fordyce Coburn and moved to Wilton, New Hampshire. Dr. Coburn, a medical advisor, became her partner in both marriage and her writing endeavors. It didn't take long for Abbott to find success, as her work was accepted by several popular magazines shortly after their relocation. In 1909, Harper's Monthly Magazine published two of her poems, marking the beginning of her literary career. Abbott's writing style was deeply rooted in her own experiences and emotions. In her autobiography, Being Little in Cambridge When Everyone Else Was Big, she revealed that as a child, she was nervous and excitable. Through her fiction, she tapped into this side of herself, infusing her work with intense emotions. Although her stories often featured characters facing hardships, Abbott always ensured that they found happiness in the end. Her protagonists were audacious young girls, while their male counterparts were quiet, strong, and resilient. What set Abbott's writing apart was her unique approach to storytelling. She aimed for spontaneity and originality, infusing her work with vivacity and striking imagery. Abbott was uncompromising when it came to the quality of her writing and would only publish something if she truly liked it herself. Critics sometimes noted that her style could feel forced, but her charm and ability to capture the essence of turning away from the harsh realities of New England life during that time remained evident. Despite her success as a writer, Abbott and her husband did not have any children. She continued to write until her passing in 1958 in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Today, the University of New Hampshire Library holds the Eleanor Hollowell Abbott Papers in the Milne Special Collections, which primarily consist of typescripts of her short stories. Do you want to explore more novelists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.